Yes. I greet the dear audience with great love. I'm Thomas Segadi, the educational leader of the Independent Theater, the moderator of tonight's conversation. This week, Wednesday, 21st of October, we'll see the start of our fourth International Roma Theater Festival, the only International Roma Theater Festival on the world, which can be host online this year due to the virus. I would like to thank Holland for their great interest in the festival and the invited artists. It is a great honor to greet the participants of the conversation as well, who will present their work at this year's festival. They are all excellent representatives of the European theater profession who also happen to be Roma. Rodrigo Balo from Hungary, Mihaela Dragan and Alex Pifa from Romania, Nebojša Markovic from Germany, and Simonida Selimovic, who will arrive a bit later from Austria, and Richard O'Neill from Scotland. So, in the first round, I would like to ask you to introduce yourself and your work in some short sentences. Mihaela? Yes, hi, hello everyone, good to see you. So my name is Mihaela Dragan, I'm an actress and playwright from Romania. And uh, this year I will be participating together with my collective, Juvli Pen, the Roma Feminist Theatre from Bucharest, with the theatre play Roma Scene, The Age of the Witch. Uh, should I tell you a little bit about the play or should... Uh, yeah, okay, yes. yes. So um, uh, Roma Sin, The Age of the Witch is a theater play that uh, uh, I've been writing the last year during a residency at Royal Kerr Theater in London. And the play tells the story of six Roma techno witches. Um, the play is based on the Roma futurism concept that uh, I've been developing in the last years. And I should explain a little bit about what uh, Roma futurism uh, means. Actually, it's a, it's a new concept that I tried to introduce. And it's, um, it creates the interaction between Roma culture and history with uh, technology and witchcraft. So, uh, Roma Scene, the age of the witch, is about, uh, so, uh, about a futuristic utopian society where the Roma witches, cyber witches, have the power to control the technology. They control the technology and fight no fascist politics in Europe. And they also have solutions for the, for the climate crisis that we confront nowadays. Uh, do I still have time or? Can... If, if you need uh, uh, some short sentences, yes. Okay, so I'll speak a little bit about the, uh, a little bit more about the play. So, um, yeah, so actually the plot of the play, the play explains how these six women control the latest technologies and hack Brexit. And they also use quantum physic physics for tra time traveling and create hi hyper-realistic robots and develop, yes, new, polit new politics in order to, to fight the neo-fascism in Europe. Mm. Because, uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know how I have to stop. <laughs> okay, th thank you. Um, this topic will be in the next round. It's uh, close to the next round uh, okay. uh, topic. So okay. thank you. Uh, and Welcome. Let's hear Rodrigo. Hello, everybody. I am Rodrigo Balog, artistic director of Independent Theatre Hungary. Roma is not Roma movies, we are Roma and non-Roma artists who work on such social topics which relate to the lives of all of us. We 
láthatósággal a maximális társulatot. Uh, for a long time we had a we felt kind of alone, but then we discovered that in many countries there are uh, Roma theaters working and uh, they usually have very minimal support and very minimal visibility. Uh, so we thought that we should start something together. It's important to connect and do something together because together we are stronger. So this is one of the reasons why we organize in every year since uh, 2017 the one and only International Roma Theater Festival of the World. A festival során megmutatjuk a Roma Színházat és közösségünk sokszörűségét, értékeit és kiadását. So in the festival, we want to show the diversity of, uh, uh, of Roma theater and also the values and many challenges of Roma community. In case we uh, learn each other better, understand each other better, maybe we can get more along than we got till now. In case the Roma youngsters can meet uh, uh, Roma dramas and Roma uh, dramatic heroes, we are ensured that they can uh, they can get empowered and they can be more conscious and successful adults. So this is also very important. Thank you. Thank you so. And next, please, R R Richard. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Richard O'Neill. I'm a storyteller, a writer, and, and, and an author. And my um, interaction with the theatre company came about by being asked to add to their the list that they were compiling, a sort of an archive, if you will. Um, and then I was working on my own in the north of England and in Scotland. And it's a very, very lonely place as a Roma playwright. Um, and then when I found out about the theatre company and they asked me to take part in the first uh, festival, it was just absolutely amazing to see all of the work that was going on. And it's had so many positive ripples back now into England. And it's actually changing uh, Roma theatre in England, which is, especially in time of, of COVID, is, is actually quite extraordinary. Thank you. And uh, Alex? Uh, hello, I'm Alex Fifa. Uh, I'm uh, one of the Five, five uh, authors, co-authors co of the Bambina, Queen, Queen of Flowers, uh, a history show, some kind of history show that um, tells about the challenges that uh, a woman, a Roma woman, had to face uh, not so long ago in uh, our recent history in uh, Romania. It must be mentioned that Bambina was uh, uh, on an informal level uh, known as really the Queen of Flowers of B Bucharest. And that was kind of her nickname. So we followed the, the story and it is also a very good pretext, pretext to look back behind the Roma florists in Romania community's history. And it uh, unveils how this, they survived later into these days. Unfortunately, under the um, uh, very, very colorful um, occasion of the commemoration of this, uh, of this Bambina lady, uh, a lady florist, 
Well, uh, under this pretext of meeting and uh, remembering her name and uh, her good deeds in life, we kind of track also the history of the florists in Romania. And it must be said that it's not uh, been easy. It hasn't been easy on them uh, during our history since in Romania, uh, Roma's, Roma people were uh, slaves uh, for, with the longest history of slavery in uh, between the European countries. So uh, we'll dig up a little bit uh, of history and uh, celebrate a very important figure for the Roma culture, even if, uh, as I mentioned before, it was on a, on a more informal uh, level, such as a popular figure. But I think uh, this is where we met with the initiative of this festival, its fourth edition, and it's a very big honor for us to be part in this. And the idea, the main idea of the festival of showing up uh, Roma heroes, Roma figures that of course, they don't uh, wear clocks uh, these days, but they do exist. And in, in the communities that are part, they are part in, they are very important figures and figures to, to be either remembered or followed uh, by, uh, by all of us today. Thank you so much. Nevoisha. No. Now. <laughs> Hi. Uh, Slavish, can you? I, I'm Nebosha Markovic, uh, and I'm uh, uh, in this uh, Roma Ethical Theater Company. And this is my brother, Slavisha. And uh, he will. I, I'm going to uh, say a couple of words uh, because uh, Nebosha had a problem with uh, his accent. He don't speak. <laughs> he, <laughs> okay, but, but uh, yes, uh, I want to say, okay, with us is also Rebe Rebecca. Uh, and uh, I want to say uh, the first time, um, because uh, that I'm very lucky to see all the people now in this round. Uh, this is kind of dream uh, for us, uh, like pioneers also in Berlin, uh, uh, in this, uh, in the, uh, context uh, Roma and theater. Uh, this, uh, this is uh, the first place. And the uh, second, um, uh, of course, I have to say something uh, to our connection to the Roma theater uh, and to festival. And um, I can say at the first place, this, this festival, um, like uh, um, I heard it uh, for, uh, because of Rodrigo, and um, then Simonida and so on. And um, uh, this is actually also one of important issues uh, for Nevoz and me, um, like to establishment something like this, like international um, um, uh, contemporary uh, theater uh, activities of our, uh, our people and everybody who feel like, feels like this. Um, so it's like kind of dream, it's very nice. And the uh, connection to the Roma theater, um, I, I, I was thinking um, there is no connection uh, with the Roma theater. We are part of Roma theater. I, I wanted this uh, because um, Actually, we grounded uh, Roma Eta Club Theater uh, in Berlin uh, 2005 and 2006, we get some plays. Of course, like Rodrigo said, because we, we, didn't, we, we didn't get a lot of, uh, enough um, uh, support and then we quit 2013 with, uh, with the plays. But uh, idealistic, we exist uh, still. And, um, and this is, uh, I have to say, in this time uh, when we came from Yugoslavia here, this was also idea, okay, we want to proceed 
uh, from this point, wo, uh, which was unterbrochen, uh, um, um, uh, which, um, which was um, interruption. interruption in Yugoslavia. So we said, okay, we make theater. And, but we didn't um, make the theater uh, like uh, something from something uh, um, uh, kunstlich. Uh, artistic, and artificial. Yeah, we didn't want to make something artificial uh, to, to establish some artificially project and not and uh, and ethnical, but we wanted to to uh, to install something uh, together with the uh, people with inhibitors in one district of Berlin, and this was very good. This was what functional, and then people who are not Roma uh, identified themselves with this Roma Italo theater, and this is what is functional because we we uh, like. Somebody asked me in one conference in Brussels a long time ago, what is this Roma theater? And then uh, I started to think about it. And then uh, actually I realized, okay, the question uh, is, uh, what is German theater? What is, uh, what is national theater? And, um, you know, there is a definition, but uh, I think this is important to um, uh, uh, this connection to Roma theater is actually to, to work on actuality or on classical literature, but from the perspective of people who have this experience uh, to be uh, uh, um, uh, Roma or uh, 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 and everything, what, is, what does it mean, uh, like social and culture. So, Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, nice to see you, how diverse the Roma Theater is. Also, it doesn't have enough visibility yet. I'm going to ask you another round question now. This year, the festival revolves around the theme of survival and prosperity. How do your productions relate to these two themes? For the scape of simplicity, uh, please keep the previous order. Michaela? Yeah. yeah, sorry, but I think I didn't get the question. So this year theme is like prosperity and how does uh, our performances relate to this theme? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Interesting question. So, prosperity and survival yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 actually yes i think roma scene the age of the witch is talking about how we as roma community can prevail in the future and it takes over this idea of uh, roma roma people being in control with their own lives and uh, having a future so yeah i think it's about survival the future has to be about survival about joy about pride about roma resistance so this is how the characters of the play the techno witches vision and imagine this uh, utopian society where finally roma people can find a safe place without discrimination, without racism, where they can prosper, where they can uh, resist, and they they are in power, and they also have access to 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 their own lives and control the community, and yeah, and at the same time, imagining strategies and tools for for the new generations. Mm. Great, thank you, thank you so. Rodrigo, let's talk about a uh, short about the show and how how it uh, uh, answered these two teams. So the village day is played in a disadvantaged village. 
our audience has a function. Uh, they are like uh, uh, poverty porn tourists. All of them want to see what is going on, like a big drama in a poor village. That's why they are coming. After a while, they will learn that the biggest influence in the community is a Roma woman uh, who lives alone with her son called Mara. She is the only one who can give credit to the people. She gives like firewood, uh, clothes, uh, food, cigarettes and the most important money. Of course, she does it with uh, interest. As these people are not potential uh, clients for the banks, so none of the business banks would give them credit because they are not, um, they don't have enough incomes to pay it back. The informal money lending is uh, uh, banned by the law. So beside that, our main character, Mara, is a good patron. So she also pays attention what happens in the community. But we also uh, ask the questions, why all communities uh, uh, produce their own usury people and their own authoritarian uh, leaders? And can maybe a, a lady who gives usury to people still understandable or maybe also adorable? And at which point and why she finally becomes still a monster. So this is a, a universal topic, as I also mentioned before. And we don't need to go very far, because if we watch at uh, Eastern European societies or Hungary, there is a paradox in, in these countries. Yeah, that oppressed groups uh, although they don't want to support authoritarian regimes and leaders, but in the same time, they always support that, which happens in, also in the mainstream societies of these countries. <laughs> yeah, Rodrigo said that, uh, 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 that you are, <laughs> you are uh, doing like that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, Alex? Do you, do you want me to go, Thomas? Alex, here? Or Richard, yes. I can hear you, but no, you cannot hear me. Can you hear me no. now? Yeah. Do you, do you want um, me to speak now? Okay. Yes, at first, uh, 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 please, uh, Richard, at first, uh, it was my fault, uh, then I say, Alex. No problem. Um, we talk about survival and prosperity, and in the majority of Roma communities, that would usually come down to the family. The family is the hub. That's what provides the survival and the prosperity. And our play, and I say our play because it's five people, and from all over Europe, and it's called the European family. And what we're trying to do, I think, is to have a look at the 
similarities between this particular Roma family, but also the differences. And there's something that happens in this particular family, a really life-changing event for all of them. And it's how they react. And this play is about change. It's about the changing face of Roma families. It's also about change, at personal change. And sometimes, I think within families, within life, you need to have a, a tragedy to really move you and, and, and so that you will change. And there's revelation in this play. So things are revealed about people, about themselves, about other people, just within the family. It's a filmed uh, play. And the people that are interacting uh, about a tragedy, but there's, there are revelations, as I said, about the people. But there's also a hope towards the end of the play, there is redemption as well. Because I hope that we, we see this. And, and very often, I think, we see when we talk about Roma families, we think we know about them because of the mainstream TV or mainstream films. We don't realise that there is a diversity within those families. And I think that's what we're trying to get across as well, to show people that, to show people within the community and also outside the community. And it's been mentioned already this evening, and, and I think it's really interesting. These are universal themes. Everybody will suffer loss. Everybody will suffer these things in life. And families come unglued. They come apart. And sometimes they're never put back together. And sometimes they are. So following this play, I think, I think people will see a lot of themselves, uh, whether they're a Roma person or a non-Roma person, they will see a lot of those things. Um, I hope it challenges people, both inside the community and outside the community, because I found writing the play and working with the other writers that actually a lot of my uh, perceptions were challenged. A lot of things that I thought about my Roma family and beyond were challenged. That you know that that for me is is the um, I suppose the, the the crux of the play really um, the similarities the differences the challenge and I I think it, it as it says it's a European family um, the family is spread all over Europe and this is what's happened to a lot of Roma families we have become split we used to be together so we had that togetherness we had that survival and prosperity really really close but now people are working in different countries if they live in the same country they're in different areas they have to go further for their work and they don't go together the internet technology is great um but it also can can build barriers between people too because people tend to just stay in their own little world so i, I hope this play um i really believe this play i should say um will show the differences, the similarities, um, and will challenge a few stereotypes and move us on. You know, this, this is not just about Roma. This is about a family who happened to be Roma. Okay. And, yeah, that's, that's, uh, I'm very passionate about it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Simonira Salimovic, good to see you. Uh, we we, we can, can't wait to see you. So... Uh, please, Alex, uh, uh, can, can we hear uh, Simonida before you? Simonida, I would like to ask you uh, to introduce yourself and your work in shortly. And um, please tell us some sentences about how your performances in this year's festival how it uh, answer these two topics, these, these two themes, the um, survival and the uh, and the prosperity is this for me uh, for, for simonida okay uh, please tap your microphone uh, on do you hear me yes yeah uh, the theater is about three women that are in the prison in Austria, in uh, Vienna, because they are refugees and they don't have passports, don't know documents, no papers. Mm -hmm. And they want to get asylum in, um, in Vienna. 
the um, three women there from one is from um, Syria or she say that she's from Syria mm. one other is from uh, Iran and the other one she's uh, from Macedonia and um, they're there because they have to like they treated like uh, really like they did something they uh, are really in the prison and then um, in this in this um, piece, you could uh, you could see how the women are treated uh, as refugees in in this in the prison, and how also you, they like EU EU the European countries act with the re refugees and mm -hmm. the minorities and how these uh, women like uh, start to find solutions to get out of this story, to get uh, asylum and to go out of this prison. And uh, one of these women, she's uh, also Roma. And it's not, I mean, it's also about Roma, this um, topic, but not like just about this. It's um, a play about uh, humanity about prosperity about like um, how to get power how to uh, come out out of uh, some uh, problems and out of all these document stuffs and we are talking about politic in this uh, play about um, women uh, especially about women because the most of the refugees, they were only men. Mm -hmm. And we ask, we had the question like, why just, why we see just refugees as men? So wh where mm -hmm. are the women? And we found then out that they just pay for men to left their countries where the war is because they could um, like, they couldn't be raped or they could um, also send money to their family and they all like collect money to send one of their from the family member to the European country to get their like uh, work and uh, to send money and to bring the other families also. And in uh, when women are refugees, they have other problems uh, like because they have another sexuality they're homosexual, or because of um, they they lost their uh, husband, and then uh, like you you will the family or like the people they will see you with other um, you will not reach this respect how you they received it, mm. and uh, yeah. And also, like, yeah, it's it's a bit um, how to say about really like surviving and um, women women stories. Okay, thank you, thank you so much, uh, Alex. Now it's your chance to tell something about your your show. I hope I hope you can hear. In the to see you. I had the crash with the computer. <laughs> uh, I apologize. <clears throat> um, once again, Bambina Queen of Flowers uh, is, uh, how to say, it? maybe the perfect example of uh, how these two things get al got along with the, the Roma community, the larger community of Romas in Romania. We're talking about 2 million people approximately and uh, with a special uh, look on uh, and uh, deeper look in uh, within the uh, florist com florist uh, com community in Romania. so uh, for the roma there was no good time uh, so to say um, maybe it was a, a little bit better uh, regarding prosperity right and when we say prosperity, first thing is uh, life conditions and money. Well, they kind of made it almost 
with this uh, tradition of their of selling flowers and this made their uh, their living easier they could earn a living after uh, living after uh, finishing uh, with the slavery you know they haven't got uh, from the state uh, anything like a compensation or something they were just left off uh, in the street and uh, barely naked uh, this is the true history not what they uh, sell us on uh, propaganda you know so um, we try to follow the Roma Flores community during a longer period of time, like uh, from the liberation, when the liberation started, until uh, the interbellic uh, period, and uh, further on through communism and uh, through our days. So uh, we'll find out where the Roma community of the florists is today and uh, the clue maybe I don't want to spoil the play because I'd really like to, to okay. yeah I don't want to spoil the plot but I can tell you this the one and only highlight of this entire period was when Bambina the real woman Lina Georgescu has got uh, to be the first importer of flowers, yeah, from uh, from the outside, the yeah. uh, exterior into Romania, and this was uh, in during the Ceausescu's time. So maybe it is interesting to see, and really to see where they are now, because uh, again, not spoiling anything, but <laughs> I just want to to mention that the florist community uh, own marketplace, this is real life we're talking about, has been totally shut down and demolished by the mayor and the uh, municipality, yes? Mm. Right now in March during the pandemic and the period when people were forced to stay in house. This is when the government in Romania considered it absolutely necessary to clear out a, a, a market, a flower market that has, that has been in, in, in the, the middle of Bucharest, the capital of Romania, for more mm. than 100 years, and they demolished it. Yeah. Thank, thank, you. Th th thank you. I, I, I I'm so apologize because uh, we have not so much time. And we, 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 we want to hear the Ro Roma Act, too. And you, you, you will have to know, uh, after your shows, uh, will be an audience discussion uh, during the festival. So if you have more information about the, 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 uh, about the background of your stories, you can share it with the audience. So... Let's Naboisha uh, and uh, uh, tell us something um, about your shows. So, um, uh, prosperity, uh, yeah, and, and um, this is a very, very interesting question because um, uh, we, we have uh, in last century a lot of uh, political uh, have you seen the also no? No. Uh, no. Uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, co political correct correctness uh, uh, we have still it and and also uh, these um, issues uh, about Roma is uh, of course um, everything else but not really prosperity. Um, and uh, survival. Uh, mm. This is uh, for me like uh, you can be everything and you can talk about uh, what you want, but don't talk about um, uh, poor. Uh, uh, mm. uh, no, no, no. Don't talk about uh, people who are poor. Poor mm. is criminal. This yeah. is and this is uh, um, unfortunately like this, uh, and this is uh, actual also uh, if we talk about refugees, 
to uh, yeah the, the 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 worst refugees are those refugees uh, which came to Europe uh, because of financial situation. This is they are the worst, you know, <laughs> and and Roma also. Roma is very bad people because want to survive and want to earn. So I want to, this is so, and uh, uh, of course our play. Um, what what is uh, what is this there uh, in on this topic? Um, a long time ago, when I was just start uh, and Rebecca start to talk about this play, and then say, ah, okay, this is uh, the play with the basement of on on um, on story from Franz Kafka, uh, Bau, the borough, the borough, and. Um, and this goes about one animal. Uh, this animal. Animal like human. Uh, yes. No. 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 But this, in the original, animal? original is uh, uh, this maul wolf. Uh, maul wolf. Maul. Mm -hmm. wolf. <laughs> it's uh, uh, a mole. Mole. Yeah, mole. A mole. And this is this again. And then, okay, of course, the the place uh, very adapted and. Um, uh, in uh, the issue of this place, of course, this this um, this phenomenon uh, that uh, people uh, like um, doing to protect their own um, existence make they isolate them and they make another down. They are pressed. Mm -hmm. And this is the phenomenon, not from now, this is phenomenon a uh, thousand years. Uh, and the people are very interesting animals. They, they learn uh, very slowly and they forgot very fast. What I wanted to say, what was the topic? Ah, so, uh, and this is, and then we discussed, okay. In this way, it's going. It it it's happened something with the uh, one animal. Then so no 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 not the animal. This is one, uh, one human, like with uh, one animal animalic animalic human. No no wait a moment. But every human is animalic. So it's now only about human, and this is uh, actually uh, what is important. Um, uh, there are two perspectives. Uh, it goes about a person uh, actually under the earth, and but this under the earth is only one frame. It's actually what's happened over the uh, on, on the okay. above uh, the earth, and uh, it's of course uh, we analyzed and we make this play to, to make a transparency about this um, um, uh, cynic, cynism, cynism, cynism and, uh, and, and capability of each person to be oppressor. Each person can be oppressor in one time. And um, and this is this is one uh, issue. The second issue is, of course, uh, what is also important, not only um, not only for Roma intellectuals uh, who are searching all the time, also one category to excuse themselves because they are Roma and because we are in this situation in which we are. Mm -hmm. It's also interesting for our other uh, to see them from our perspective, because the uh, idea is to um, do not to explain our situation, to explain the majority situation, the system situation, system, um, system uh, mechanism. Uh, and this mechanism put all us in some role, in some, in, mm -hmm. in, in, uh, in this, um, unfortunately for Roma also, uh, outside 
and <laughs> so I don't know if it's clear enough. But if somebody have a question, can uh, uh, can uh, write me email. Simonida. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Th thank you so much, uh, Slavisha. Uh, it was it was so interesting. Looking forward to see all your shows. Thank you for. Uh, sorry, before closing, just Rodrigo would like to mention the two other performances whose representatives are not here now. Only two sentences. Hogy, hogy lesz még a a, a, az ukrajnai, a román színháznak az előadása. So there will be also one performance from the Ukrainian romance theater. Egy a második világháborúban vándorló cigány karavánnak a túléléséről szól. Uh, it's about a Roman caravan in the Second World War and how they survived in those days. És Igor Kripunov együttető rendezte. And it was is directed by Igor Kripunov. És lesz még egy transzilvániai előadás. And there is a, a play from Transylvania. Ez Fekete Lóban Zsolt élettörténete. Uh, it's a, a, the story, life story of Zsolt Fekete Lovas. Az egy, a romániai egészségügyi ellátórendszer szemszögé. Uh, from the perspective of the Romanian health system. És hogyha lehet. So don't forget about the meat. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, thank you, all of you. Thank you for the artists for accepting the invitation. I hope we managed to arouse the interest of the audience for the upcoming uh, performances and Roma Theater in general. We are waiting for you at fourth International Roma Theater Festival online. We will show one performance every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Um, in Central European time. So let's let's see the shows across the online area. Thank you for all. Thank you one. for having us. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you all. Bye bye.